Another scoop from the information, Google is apparently testing Gemini with outside companies, suggesting that the release of the highly anticipated AI model is just around the corner. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. We've got a fun one for your Friday. One of the things that everyone is paying attention to is the competition between the biggest players, Meta, OpenAI, Google, around the future of LLMs, and in particular, whether anyone is going to exceed the capabilities of GPT-4. This week, we got yet another scoop from the information that suggests that the release of Google's Gemini is right around the corner, and this is something that has been getting buzz for weeks now. On August 27th, Semi Analysis, which is the same blog that published that Google has no moat memo from earlier in the year, wrote a piece called Google Gemini Eats the World. Gemini smashes GPT-4 by 5x the GPU pours. Basically, this piece made a very simple argument, which is that Google's Gemini has access to more compute than anyone else. They called Google the most compute-rich firm in the world and said basically that they had 5x the computing resources that GPT-4 did. Now, if you need evidence that this post touched a nerve, OpenAI's Sam Altman, usually a pretty reserved guy, took to Twitter a couple days after its release saying, Incredible Google got that semi-analysis guy to publish their internal marketing and recruiting chart, lol. However, this came off exactly as it seems like it came off, as defensive and nervous. Indeed, Elon Musk responded, Are the numbers wrong? To which the author of the piece, Dylan Patel, wrote, they are correct. More than anything, this conversation reflected just how much attention there is on this particular battle. And this was the environment in which we got a report from John Victor at The Information yesterday called Google Near's release of Gemini AI to challenge OpenAI. The post reads, Google has given a small group of companies access to an early version of its highly anticipated conversational artificial intelligence software. Giving outside developers access to the software known as Gemini means Google is getting close to incorporating it in its consumer services and selling it to businesses through the company's cloud unit. The piece reinforces that Gemini is meant to be multimodal. It writes, Gemini comprises a set of LLMs which can power everything from chatbots to features that summarize text or generate original text, such as email drafts, song lyrics, and news articles based on descriptions of what users want to read. Gemini is also expected to help software engineers write code and to generate original images based on what users ask to see. Mainly, though, the article points out just how high the stakes are for Gemini's launch. Quote, Google is banking on the software to power everything from its barred chatbot to new features in its workspace software in addition to boosting its cloud server rental business. But is there anything in here that gives us more information about how Gemini might actually compete? Well, the piece writes, quote, Gemini has an advantage over GPT-4 in at least one respect, said a person who has tested it. The model leverages reams of Google's proprietary data from its consumer products in addition to public information from the web. As a result, the model should be especially accurate when it comes to understanding users' intentions with particular queries, and it appears to generate fewer incorrect answers known as hallucinations. Now, I don't know if the person referenced in this was Brian Romley, but Brian Romley did quote tweet this piece and said earlier today, I have been testing a version of Google's Gemini and find it very interesting. It is equivalent to ChatGPT4, but with newly up to the second knowledge base. This saves it from some hallucinations. The information also got some info about how Google plans to release it. Apparently, they are going to give companies access to it through their Google Cloud Vertex AI service and will, in fact, release different size versions so developers can customize it to what they need it for. For example, paying for a less sophisticated version to handle simple tasks and even one that's small enough to run on a personal device. According to the sources for this article, Google is currently giving developers access to a relatively large version of Gemini, but not the largest version it is developing, which would be more on par with GPT-4. So all in all, only a little bit new in here, but confirmation of some things that we expected and an interesting reminder of this advantage that Google has taking advantage of the proprietary data that it already has access to from its consumer products. This is one of the most interesting areas of potential differentiation. Earlier this week, we discussed how Apple's release of the A17 chip and the way that they're using it with the new double tap watch features gives an indication that they are trying to also take advantage of their comparative advantages, which is their focus on running software on device rather than in the cloud to increase privacy and improve performance. That could obviously translate to a very unique approach for AI models. And it seems like Google accessing its proprietary data from its consumer products is a version of that as well. Now, while he might not have talked extensively about Gemini itself, Google CEO Sundar Pichai has talked a lot about AI more generally lately. 
Google just had its 25th anniversary. And in part to commemorate that, Pichai wrote a memo to Googlers around the world. Unsurprisingly, AI is at the very center of how they see the future. In the section of the memo titled A Healthy Disregard for the Impossible, he writes, Google has been investing in AI since almost the beginning. We were one of the first to use machine learning in our products starting in the early 2000s for spelling corrections, improving the quality of ads, and showing suggestions and recommendations. Pichai talks about the first time he went and saw a demo of a neural network in practice in 2012 and said, it was the first moment I thought to myself, this is really going to change everything. He goes on, I had a similar feeling when I saw the groundbreaking interdisciplinary research happening at DeepMind focusing on understanding the nature of intelligence. This progress deeply influenced my thinking when I became CEO in 2015 that Google should pivot to be an AI-first company. Now, in addition to going through the products that they've released, Pichai talks about the societal implications as well. He writes, As excited as we are about the potential of AI to benefit people in society, we understand that AI, like any early technology, poses complexities and risks. Our development and use of AI must address these risks and help to develop the technology responsibly. The AI principles we launched in 2018 are an important part of how we do this. These principles prompt questions like, will it be helpful to people and benefit society? Or could it lead to harm in any way? Now, this is interesting because one of the big things that sped up the conversation around AI safety this year was Turing Award winner Jeffrey Hinton leaving Google and arguing that it, among other companies, was getting more reckless in how it was thinking about releasing AI models because of the pressure of market competition. To the extent that he feels that way, Pichai has certainly tried to play this down. Insider reports Google CEO says he isn't worried about catching up to OpenAI. Quote, I feel very comfortable about where we are. Moving back to this 25th anniversary memo, the looking ahead section is basically entirely about AI. He writes, as we look ahead, I've been reflecting on the commitment from our original founder's letter in 2004 to develop services that improve the lives of as many people as possible, to do things that matter. With AI, we have the opportunity to do things that matter on an even larger scale. He points out that a million people are already using generative AI in Google Workspace, that their AI-powered flood forecasting now covers places where 460 million people live, that a million researchers have used the AlphaFold database, which covers 200 million predictions for protein structures, and he says, quote, we've demonstrated how AI can help the airline industry to decrease contrails from planes, an important tool for fighting climate change. Still, he writes, and this is really the money shot, there is so much more ahead. Over time, AI will be the biggest technological shift we see in our lifetimes. It's bigger than the shift from desktop computing to mobile, and it may be bigger than the internet itself. It's a fundamental rewiring of technology and an incredible accelerant of human ingenuity. Making AI more helpful for everyone and deploying it responsibly is the most important way we'll deliver on our mission for the next 10 years and beyond. AI will allow us and others to ask questions like, how could every student have access to a personal tutor in any language on any topic? How could we enable entrepreneurs to develop new forms of clean energy? What tools could we invent to help people design and create new products and grow new businesses? Etc. 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 He concludes, as these frontiers come into view, we have a renewed invitation to act boldly and responsibly to improve as many lives as possible and to keep asking those big questions. Our search for answers will drive extraordinary technology progress over the next 25 years. And in 2048, if somewhere in the world, a teenager looks at all we've built with AI and shrugs, we'll know we succeeded. And then we'll get back to work. Now, I think that the takeaway from this is that as much as it's easy and exciting, frankly, to get caught up in the AI race, the model competition and what Gemini might mean, these companies are making long-term longitudinal bets that AI is going to remake the architecture of everything. That means when we're discussing AI, when we're thinking about its implications, when we're trying to understand how companies will and won't behave around it, we have to be thinking not on two and a half month terms, but on 25 year terms. In other words, Gemini might be the next thing to be released, but it won't even be close to the last thing to be released. Until next time, guys. Peace.